Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Cold Armada. Get ready? Prepare for blast off. Your Fortress of Solitude. Greetings, program. When you're alive. Your Sanctum Sanctorum. Resistance is futile. Welcome. Vision is triumphant. This is where the fun begins. Proof positive that geeks have inherited the earth. It's showtime. It's time to get your geek on with Dave Gramellion. All right. Oh, yes, indeed. Welcome, everyone, to Get Your Geek On, the first ever, the best, the brightest, geekiest radio talk show in San Antonio. I want to thank everyone for for listening, for tuning in. Um, Whether you're listening on the podcast, you're listening live streaming at 930amtheanswer.com, or you're driving around San Antonio and you just happen to pick us up on the dial. Welcome here, welcome here, welcome here. What is this show? What is it all about? Who am I? Why are you listening to me? And about 85 other questions are going to be answered later on. Uh, tonight, we are going to uh, have a lot of fun. <laughs> we're going to have fun every week, but the first show is always the most fun. The, um, we're going to talk about the Warcraft movie that just came out. That's going to be, I'm going to give my full on movie review about that. And I'm going to throw in... I think a fact that's going to surprise a lot of people. I think there's something out there that hasn't really been addressed that is going to just make you sit up and go, really? I didn't even know that. E3 happened just this past week. We are going to talk big time about E3 and what you can expect to see in the next six months, the next year, and how gaming is really going to start changing. And I don't mean changing in that Nintendo's going to come out with another console or Xbox is going to come out with another console. No, I mean fundamental change in gaming. Uh, Then we've also got some Star Wars news that I want to talk about. Did you know that Steven Spielberg was instrumental in getting J.J. Abrams to direct The Force Awakens? Of course, you're shaking your head no right now, and that's good because that's why you listen, so you can learn all these wonderful, fantastical things. Also, there seems to have been a bit of controversy regarding Rogue One, the upcoming Star Wars first ever standalone movie. Yeah, I'm about ready to tell everyone to shut up and get over it, but that's just kind of a preview as to what we're going to get into later on. So what is this show? Get Your Geek On originally was just a podcast. It was something I did in my living room, but something I thought that I did rather well. I had a nice following, which if you're listening, hey guys, how you doing? Isn't this cool? And I got a few guests to come on. And by a few guests, I mean James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi since 2003. Jake Lloyd, the Jake Lloyd, who was, you know, you know, little Anakin from uh, The Phantom Menace got to come on. I I got other guests to come on. Vanessa Marshall, uh, Tim Rose, who was at Merlac Bar, and so on and so forth. And this was all just from an amateur podcast. You know, I was just some guy just spewing into a microphone in my living room. But now we've graduated. Oh, yes, the show has evolved into a terrifying new form of awesomeness, which is this. It is talk radio live here in the seventh largest city in the United States. And I love it. It's fantastic. You know what it tells me that we can have a show like this? It tells me that you think about the last 15 to 20 years, geek has been kind of a derogative, dirty word. It's right up there with nerd, poindexter, dweeb. You know, you think geek, you think, okay, you got wedgies and swirlies and you got, you know, beat up on in high school and all that. But geek has evolved. Geek is now mainstream. Geek is in. The geeks have really inherited the earth. I'm looking over at my sound prognosticator here and he's like nodding his head furiously. I think it's about ready to fall off. But yes, he's absolutely right. No longer... Do you see somebody, you know, wearing a Captain America t-shirt and you think, look at the door. No, now it's, uh, it's investment bankers. It's full on adults. It's kids in high school now who are like, dude, that's a pretty sweet looking Wolverine t-shirt. Geek is in. Geek is very much in. How in? I love throwing the stat around. In fact, it's one of the stats that helped me get this show. Thank you very much, guys. Spider-Man by himself. Not bad for a guy who doesn't exist, but, you know, Spider-Man by himself sold $1.3 billion in merchandise. In, I think it was 2014 or 15. 
Think about that. 1.3 billion with a B. That's not Star Wars. It's not Star Trek. It's not Marvel as a whole. It's not the Avengers. It's not even Black Widow blow up dolls. No, no, no. Instead, it is Spider-Man by himself. Think about that for a minute. Geek is in. And that's why I love this show. That's why we have this show here is because it's about time to bring geek to the airwaves. It's about time to bring geek to radio so that we can sit here and we can talk about the news of the day that hits geeks, the movies, the reviews, gaming, the whole nine yards. And yeah, we'll probably have a few geeky debates too that make you roll your eyes like the Star Wars prequels. We'll talk about those at some point, um, I'm sure why the next generation movies for Star Trek were lousy. And yes, I do mean just about all of them. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You're going to throw things at your radio dial, but trust me, no, no, no. <laughs> we'll have those debates. We'll have those discussions and we'll have all that and more, including Marvel versus DC, uh, Sony versus Microsoft and all sorts of fun stuff. That is what this show is. This is your home. This is, like the intro said, your fortress of solitude. You want to talk geek. You want to talk it here. That's why we're here. So uh, with that being said, with that in mind, let's go ahead and let's talk about um, the Warcraft movie. Alrighty, and I'm sorry, I actually broke a taboo. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done a show like this. I broke a show taboo. I have a checklist that I go through, and I got to make sure that I have everything I need in order to do the show right. If you're a veteran, if you remember my podcast, you're probably not happy with me because I, I, I broke the first commandment, which is to check out everything that I need to do the show right. The first thing is, do I have something to drink? I have to have a tasty beverage because if you're going to talk for just about an hour you need something to drink. So do I have that? Yes. Yes. I was right here. Um, that is a refreshing beverage. That is very nice. Uh, the next thing I need, I have to have a back scratcher because if you're going to sit up here for an hour, you know, you, it's, you know, your back starts to itch. You got to have something you can't, I can't just rub up against the back of the chair and pray it goes away. So back scratcher, got that. I'm good to go. Hits the right spot. Thank you. And then of course the last thing I need. And again, this is, the veterans will, will know this one and they'll love this one, but don't worry, you will too, because I have to have it. I, I think it's a requirement if you're going to do a geeky show, you got to have, you got to have all blue. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. You got to have a lightsaber if you're going to do a geeky show, and mine is uh, is lit up all nice and blue. And uh, I get such a kick at I have it autographed by a number of geeky personalities, such as Mark Hamill, Ian McDiarmid, who played the Emperor, um... Let's see, who else did I get? I got uh, Ray Park to autograph it. I mean, it's just, it's autographed all over the place. So it just, it feels like you, these are staples you have to have. I, I don't know how some radio shows can go on for three hours and like they don't have a back scratcher. That's just kind of weird. What do you do in the middle of a show if you have an itch right in the spot you can't scratch? What do you do? You, you like call a break or something? I don't even know. I, that's just, it's weird to me. All right, so let's talk Warcraft. Uh, this segment brought to you by our friends over at D's Electronics that is local to San Antonio. This guy does amazing work with in-home speakers, in-car speakers, in-truck, in-boat. Doesn't matter. You want, to put, you want something in your wall, in your ceiling, 5.1, 7.1. If you want your bat cave to really rumble with some serious home theater quality sound, you call Daniel at uh, 210-416-8271. The guy's fantastic. I mean, he really is. He showed me some fantastic studio quality, home theater quality sound. And then we plugged in the Dark Knight. And I was like, yeah, I'm never going to movie theater again. <laughs> now, my TV isn't that big. So, of course, I'll still go see movies. But still, this home theater quality. I mean, it rumbles. It really does. And then, he, you know, we pop in Jurassic Park. The T-Rex roar. Yeah, I know the movie's 23 years old, but when you hear, you hear that, that T-Rex sound, I know that's an awful impression. I'm yeah, it's, I'm not doing that again. Uh, but still 
my theater rumbles. My couch rumbles. It's an awesome sound. That's why you need to check out D's Electronics 210-416-8271. Tell him that you want to get your geek on. All right, so let's talk about the Warcraft movie and just give a brief rundown and review. Yes, there are spoilers coming in this review. No, I will not be offended if you decide to turn down the radio dial and then you'll turn it back up again later. You know, go right ahead. That's fine. It's cool. I understand. The movie's only been out for a couple of weeks, maybe. So if you haven't gotten a chance to see it yet, here's my review. Go see the movie. Go see the movie. I, I'm, I'm serious. It got lambasted by the critics. But keep in mind, these are the same critics who thought Batman versus Superman was stupid. It had its moments. Batman Superman had its moments. But still, was it really as bad as the critics said? No, of course not. Was it worth it to go see it in the movie at least once time in the theater? Yes, it was. So it's the same thing with the Warcraft movie. Warcraft is sitting in the 20s on RottenTomato.com. Uh, yeah, red alert, guys. That's Green Lantern territory. That's Fantastic Four territory. But this movie is neither of those they blame it on oh it's too much like Tolkien or look dwarves like Tolkien derp, derp. no it's not like that at all oh okay it is a, it is a little bit like that I mean there's a big battle at the end you know the guys are in armor and they're fighting these horrible monsters yeah, 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 yeah. it's a little like Tolkien but come on so what you know it's also a little bit like the battle of Normandy in Saving Private Ryan there are gun blasts people lose limbs it's the same, yeah, it's, you know, it's similar to that also. The movie itself, I think, was actually well done. Uh, the first thing that jumps out at you, of course, is people want to know what is the CGI like. You're not going to this movie for the CGI, not like you would with Avatar. When you saw Avatar, and I'm not talking about The Last Airbender, that, that's, no, no, I'm not, I don't want to lose my lunch, I really don't, so I'm not talking about The Last Airbender movie. Yeah, you can laugh there, that's okay, that's a joke. The, uh, the Avatar movie, James Cameron Avatar, you went to see the effects. Hardly anybody went there because they wanted to see Pocahontas in space, which is what it was. It was Dances with Wolves in Space. Everybody went there to go see the effects because that movie was billed as, if you're going to see a movie in the theater, this is it. This movie is designed for, for the effects in the theater, which is why you went to go see it. Force Awakens, you want to go see the effects. You want to see explosions, you want to see lightsaber battles, you want to see Maz Kanata, you want to see CGI, you go there for that. Warcraft, the CGI is almost an afterthought. Almost. There are moments that will make you go, wow. The Dark Portal. I'm so glad I saw that part in 3D and in IMAX because, wow, that was impressive. And to see Gul'dan and to see the orcs and to see... You know, the little orc, you know, thrall baby, he's so cute. In the CGI, that was well done. That was really well done. I was concerned that they were going to make him look too human, uh, but it, it really worked out well. So that covers the CGI. We're good there. The story. What's the story? Is it any good? Believe it or not, it's actually a pretty good story. A little complicated at times. The first 10, 15 minutes are a little muddled, especially if you haven't played the game. Which brings me to my next point here. The big question on everybody's mind is, do you have to have played the game in order to go see the movie and really get it? No. Will it help? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you bet your geek it does. There is no question in my mind that if you've played the game, even if you've only played World of Warcraft as opposed to just Warcraft, you'll get the inside jokes, you'll get the lore, you'll get the history, and you'll probably geek out a little bit and get some geek bumps on your arm. No, not goosebumps. I mean geek bumps right there on your arm because you'll get to see everyone in the lore that you've known about for the past 5, 10, 15 years. Let's see, 1990, 2016, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, wow, I feel old. Uh, <laughs> the, um, it was, it was really good. It was, um, you know, I, I got the little things, I got the little jokes, there's a murloc in there, and then, oh look, there's the Stormwind mailbox, isn't that cool? Look, they fly into the same place you fly into on the flight path. Then, then you'll really truly appreciate it. If, but if you haven't seen it, go see it anyway, because you may not get all the little things, but you're, those are little things. You know, none of them really impact the movie itself, so you're covered there, no problem at all. The only thing that really bugged me, stop me if I'm wrong, but the one thing that really, truly, honestly bugged me to death was our 
supposed villain. Now remember, I'm the spoiler alerts here, okay? I'm this is my second alert, so if if it's spoiled for you, well, <laughs> that's your fault. Uh Medivh is the bad guy here and he comes out in the very beginning and you know he looks kind of gandalfish and you're like oh wow cool look a wizard that's awesome but he comes out and says that his sole duty the sole reason he lives is to protect azeroth which is the the world that they're on that's what i do i am here to protect this yay peace and awesomeness and chimichangas for everyone yay that's awesome but he's the one who brings everything down he's the one who brings the horde over and you're like, wait, uh, LOL. What? How, <laughs> how did that happen? The movie doesn't really explain. There are some subtle references here and there. There's a lot left up to interpretation and a lot that you're kind of supposed to deduce on your own. And that's that the fell magic, which is this dark, corruptive, ex- you know, destructive force is uh, corrupting him. Well, yeah, but how did he get into it? My theory is, and this is, again, a theory, but my theory is is that he dipped into it for the sake of bringing peace to everyone, bringing about the peace for Azeroth, and that he felt he needed to you know, take his game to the next level and just be as powerful as he could, which meant he had to take on the fell magic, which ultimately corrupted him. He started you know, holding on to this ring and saying, my precious, and all that fun stuff. But and ultimately corrupted him into bringing the horde over. That's the only thing so far that I've heard that makes the most sense, because otherwise it's just this guy sitting here saying that he's here to protect Azeroth by bringing the horde over to kill everyone. And, uh, yeah, that, but you're left up to interpretation. It's never really truly explained. Uh, one little thing here, I want to get into this. Uh, don't forget, later on also, we're talking about E3, and we're talking Star Wars news, and Rogue One reshoots will be coming up after the break. Um, here's something I don't think anybody knew. Uh, <laughs> Warcraft raffle stomped Star Wars at the Chinese box office. And I mean, it's not even funny. It's really not. Star Wars The Force Awakens, which is the biggest movie box office-wise on the planet, has been for for a while and will probably be for a while longer, earned a whopping $124 million total at the Chinese box office. I want you to take a guess. Just shout it into the radio. Shout it in the night air. I don't care. You know, shout it into your living room. Doesn't matter. How much do you think in five days the Warcraft movie made? Remember, total, Star Wars made $124 million. So what do you think in five days Warcraft movie made? It made in five days, you ready for this? $156 million in five days at the Chinese box office by itself. Yeah, it, it took Star Wars like a month maybe at the Chinese box office to get $124 million, maybe a few weeks or a month. Five days, $156 million. You bet, there, you bet, you, oh man, you better believe there's a sequel coming. Based off that money alone, there's a sequel coming. All right, so E3 happened this past week, so let's get down and dirty and talk some E3 here, shall we? All righty, so E3 is the biggest video game convention on the planet. I know there will be arguments made for a couple of uh, different cons and everything else, but trust me, this is the one that you wanted to listen to. Everybody wants to talk about E3. There is no question about it. So what's up with E3? What is going on there? All right, so let's get into the games first, and then we'll get into the big announcements. Uh, Bethesda has announced that they are going to come out with a remastered Skyrim. Yay. (laughs) That's just about all they came out with. Uh, It's just, it's going to look prettier. That's really their big selling point. It's going to be HD quality. It'll it'll look nice and pretty. And that's about it. Okay, but we've played Skyrim to death. No pun intended. Uh, That's it? That's what you came out with? That's your big swing at E3, huh? Is that you're going to make this pretty. Okay. 
All right. Uh, there's going to be a new God of War game coming out, and it looks fantastic. It looks... Like they're getting back to basics. It looks great. It plays great. The gameplay trailers look awesome. If you're a fan of God of War, uh, you love this announcement. It just looks wonderful. Like somebody actually put you know real money into it instead of... Eh, let's see what happens and we'll make some money back and, you know, and we'll see what GameStop thinks about it. Oh, no, 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 no. They put in a big budget here. All right, what else do we have coming out of E3? Crash Bandicoot coming back. This is good news. If Crash Bandicoot coming back is kind of like, you know, Donkey and Diddy Kong coming back for, uh, for a big game or something. Crash Bandicoot was a big part of the last 10, 15, 20, 25 years or so. Uh, a lot of people grew up with him. Probably a lot of y'all grew up with him as well, I, I imagine. And now he's coming back in a new game in HD. It's gonna. It looks great, and it, it has that Crash Bandicoot kind of feel to it, which is good. That's good. I can't stand it when people make new games, and then they just screw it up or something. It's just awful. Uh, the surprise game was Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is something that wasn't on anybody's radar, really. Not at all. It's not that anybody had heard. There were no leaks. There were no rumors. It was just all of a sudden Nintendo comes out and, oh, by the way, here's this open concept Legend of Zelda massive game you can play. And everybody goes, what? Oh, wow. (laughs) I've got guys all over the place just viewing this trailer. It's on YouTube if you want to go check it out. It looks phenomenal. It looks fantastic. It's, It's, like I said, it's open world. That's what's so different. It's open world zelda like nothing we've ever had before looks great plays great feels great uh and a total surprise but the talk of e3 was what if you've been following my website at www.mygeeksnews.com is that virtual reality is here in a big way everybody's coming out with with a headset you have the oculus you have the card the google cardboard if you can believe it a cardboard headset yes it's it's real i've seen it it's uh, exactly what you think it is. It's cardboard. Uh, Sony's coming out with one later this year that is automatically plug and play into your PS4. There are 35 million PS4s across the planet, and that means all you have to do is take the cord, plug it in, you're good to go. That's different from other ones where you have to have a cell phone or you've got to have a high-end computer, and I mean a high-end computer in order to, to work this first-gen uh, type of virtual reality, and they're coming out with a library. Sony promises 50 games, 50 VR games by the time they release their, uh, their headset. And then came the news from Microsoft, the Xbox S. Yes, everyone's talking Xbox S. No, they're not. Everyone's talking about Project Scorpio. Project Scorpio, Microsoft promises to be the most powerful console on the planet ever in our history. In fact, it'll clock out at six teraflops. No, oh, it's a teraflop. All right, so I'll tell you what a teraflop is. A teraflop is just how fast a processor can go, essentially. Yes, yes, I know, geeks and nerds, you can break it down better than that. One teraflop per second would take a human one calculation per second for 33,000 years. And I'm not making that number up either. You can actually look it up. It's pretty cool. If you did 2 plus 2 equals 4 every second for 33,000 years, you just hit a teraflop a second and this thing has six teraflops per second calculation speed okay now that also means it's going to be pricey that means that the uh the vr headset's going to go with it going to be pricey but that's the price you pay <laughs> price you oh boy all right never mind that's bad joke number two i'm gonna strike off the list there vr though vr is where you want to be at uh, that's I, I own a, a Gear VR headset myself. Fantastic. I watched the Kentucky Derby on my VR headset. I watched Xavier and Marquette in the Big East Tournament on the uh, headset. I have no interest in the Big East Tournament. I don't care. I'm from San Antonio. I don't. Why am I watching Xavier and Marquette? Because I can look up to my left while I'm wearing the VR headset, and I see in Madison Square Garden the jerseys hanging from the rafters. I look to my right, and there's a guy buying beer. I turn around behind me. Yeah, there's people back there, real live, actual people. You are at the arena. And this is only the beginning. This is first gen, and already I'm blown away by the technology. I really am. Uh, this is, um, 
this is the beginning of the next gen. And people are saying, no, VR is a fad. We had it come. We had it go. Virtual boy. Remember virtual boy? Yeah. No, 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 no. This is the real deal. VR is going to take off. There is no question whatsoever. This is the time for virtual reality gaming. This year, latter half of this year, it's going to start getting really big now. I saw um, at PAX South here in San Antonio, there were five different companies that have VR designs and games. It was incredible. All right, so uh, we're getting ready to take our break here. Uh, coming up, we have some Star Wars news. Uh, I want to talk about how Steven Spielberg is taking credit for getting J.J. Abrams to direct the movie. And also, uh, Rogue One reshoots. Oh, yes, indeed. People are whining and complaining about Rogue One already. That didn't take long, did it? I mean, there are fanboys, and then there are, ugh, fanboys. Seems like all they wanted to do is make trouble, and we are going to be talking all about that coming up here right after the break. So uh, we'll get our geek on right back after this. Uh, uh, yeah. I figure, you know, you can do a geeky show. You can talk about geeky pop culture, but why not do it with some Hendrix? <laughs> I mean, I could have put the Superman theme in there. I could have done Imperial March. I could have done a number of things. But I'm like, you know what? Let's throw some funk on this. Come on. No matter where you are, no matter when you're listening, there's nothing like a little Hendrix just to make you do a little bob, you know, a little head bob. Mm. Yeah. You know what? Give me a little more. Yeah. Mm. All right, so let's let's go ahead and let's get back into it. Uh, we got some more news that, that's coming up here. Uh, I want to talk uh, a little bit of Star Wars, including some news that came out on Thursday here about someone. Well, I'm not even sure how to phrase it because it, it you know, we, let's just say this: an interesting Marvel crossover into Star Wars that almost happened, and I'll tell you why it did not happen. Uh, also Rogue One reshoots. We're going to talk about that coming up later in the show. And also we're going to do my all time favorite part. I've brought it back from the dead, the Sarlacc pit. This is where you go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash G Y G O official. Yeah. Don't go to the pretenders. You go to the official one. And every week I'm going to put up a picture of the Sarlacc pit and you tell me on the Facebook page who you want to throw in. No, no, I'll explain the rules later. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but trust me, it's a fun segment. It's an awesome segment. So, uh, but first things first, we got some Star Wars news to talk about. So let's get into it here, shall we? Looking forward to completing your training. In time, you will call me the master. I love it. Here I am. I was just saying that, you know, oh, any geeky show can do the Imperial March. What I come on with? Imperial March dubstep. <laughs> oh, come on. You know you love it. I, I try not to go too dubstep crazy, but I heard that and I was just like, oh, I got to have that. That was too cool. All right. So Steven Spielberg uh, opened up recently about J.J. Abrams. And there's still a lot of talk about J.J. because let's face it right now, he is the director of... One, two, three, three huge, massively huge blockbusters. Uh, There is no director of any Star Trek movie that has made more money than J.J. Abrams. That's that's truth. I mean, whether or not you think the movies were any good, whether or not you thought they were just mindless action schlock because the villains were weak, the writing was in and the uh, I'm getting off. Okay, I'm getting off topic, but still massive box office hits. No question. Then he comes over. He does Force Awakens. Talk about pressure. For this guy, the expectations were through the roof. No, they were they were like out of the roof. 
I'm on a 12th floor building, and they were like through that roof. I mean, everyone was saying, oh, hey, you screw this up, man. We're going to call you Jar Jar Abrams. <laughs> I wasn't saying that. That was, you know, fanboys. Um, not fanboys the movie. And not fanboys like, you know, I am and you are. But you know fanboys. You know, the ones who root for Disney to, to screw something up, even though they're not making movies. The ones who root for J.J. to screw up so that they can, you know, grab their torches and pitchforks and, you know, hang outside his place and just, you know, just wreck his life. But no, 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 no. Instead, J.J. hit a home run with The Force Awakens. He really did. Was the movie perfect? God, no. Do I have issues with it? Yes, absolutely. Are we going to hear about that later and not right now so we don't get off topic? Yes, absolutely. Speaking of getting off topic, did you? No, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. (laughs) Ah, Come on, you got to have a little bit of laugh. You got to. If you're listening to this on, on the radio driving around town, it's 11 o'clock. You have a laugh. Come on. It's okay. All right. So, uh, so believe it or not, Spielberg is taking credit for getting J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy together to start their tremendous journey on what is now The Force Awakens. Uh, and this is a quote straight from Spielberg himself. He says, quote, I brought J.J.'s name up. I thought J.J. would be the best person to direct episode seven. I called J.J. and said, would you do it if it was offered? He said, I would, but my wife won't let me because she doesn't want me to restart any more franchises. <laughs> What's next? He's going to reboot Battlestar Galactica. He's going to reboot Stargate. I mean, he's the reboot king at this point. Oh, <laughs> you know, for a while there, I thought the J.J. Abrams thing was a rumor because he doesn't like to leave California. He really doesn't. A lot of his shooting is done in California. He hates to leave the state. I don't know why. I guess he really loves it there. Or maybe he didn't like to travel or something. But, you know, if you do Star Wars, it's guaranteed you're going to have to go to England. It's guaranteed you're going to have to shoot in some exotic location like Abu Dhabi like they did. So I can see why you would hesitate. Uh, he's, okay, so Spielberg goes on to say, but I went to Kathy. He means Kathleen Kennedy, which is the uh, most powerful woman in Hollywood right now. She's the president of Lucasfilm. And, and he, I asked, this is Spielberg, not me, because I don't know Kathleen Kennedy. But Kathleen, if you're listening, we'd love to have you on. Uh, and I asked, if I could get J.J. to say yes, would you consider him? Kathy said, are you kidding? Of course I would. But why would J.J. do Star Wars? He's already done Mission Impossible and Star Trek. So uh, I talked to Katie, Ad- KB- Katie Abrams and J.J. They went to dinner that night uh, with... Spielberg and his wife. Now that's got to be a fun table. Can you imagine being the waiter for that table? Uh, hi, Steven Spielberg. Hi, JJ Abrams and your wives. C- c- can I die now? <laughs> I love the ET Jurassic Park Schindler's list, Star Trek, uh, mission impossible lost. I mean, all the, everything you could possibly put together. I loved all your stuff all together. Oh yeah. And by the way, you know, that little picture you did with Harrison Ford called Indiana Jones. I'm sorry. Would you like water or, um, appetizer you know you want my, my, my screenplay <laughs> god oh uh, don't you dare screw up their order either oh my lord all right so they go out to dinner and right in front of katie abrams spielberg asked jj what do you think would you want to do it <laughs> and, and she turns to jj and says uh yeah sure honey you want to really do it and so steven spielberg just got up and walked away he let J.J. and his wife talk, left his wife there to talk about it. He went outside the restaurant, picked up his phone, called Kathleen Kennedy and says, yeah, when do you want to meet with J.J.? He's on board. That's mic drop right there. I mean, it's like, you ever see uh, CSI Miami? You know, when, <laughs> when the, we, oh, my wife's going to kill me because she knows, Horatio, that's his name. He always says something in the intro. He always says something clever about a dead body like, well, he knew how to get ahead. And he puts the glasses on you here. Yeah. Right. So can you imagine Steven Spielberg walks outside this restaurant, opens up his phone, says, Kathleen Kennedy, you want JJ? You got him. Mic dropping. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's how it all went down. You can thank Steven Spielberg for doing, for putting that together. Now it's, um, it's a little interesting because a lot of people have asked, why didn't Spielberg ever do a Star Wars movie? 
He almost did Return of the Jedi. Oh, yes. I know everybody's eyes go, what? You're a little bigger? He almost did it. But there was a scheduling. There's like a scheduling conflict or maybe it was that he was. I forget what it was. He was either had a scheduling conflict or he just got done with E.T. And he just like wanted a breather. He wanted a break. Something along those lines. But we almost had a Steven Spielberg Star Wars movie with teddy bears. I mean, it almost writes itself. But I wonder, though, if he would have put Carrie Fisher in the bikini. Now, there's a scary thought. Can you imagine Return of the Jedi done by Spielberg? <gasps> My God, Steven Spielberg. He's a family guy, though. I don't think he would put... I don't think he'd put Carrie Fisher in the, in the bikini. So we... Um, what could have been? All righty, so... Uh, with that being said, we've got a little bit of uh, Rogue One news to talk about here. Rogue One, the upcoming Star Wars standalone movie. Uh, let's go ahead and discuss that here, shall we? No, it's not that we're going to FM radio. No, <laughs> no instead, it's uh, Rogue One is going to feature Darth Vader. It could be 10 minutes. It could be an hour. We don't know, but Vader's going to be in it. So back in black, Vader back on screen for the first time since 2005. You get it? Ah, ah, ah. Okay, all right, all right, I get it. More subtlety. Yeah, okay. All right, that works. So Rogue One reshoots. Rogue One is the first ever Star Wars standalone movie. Never done it before. It is what they call non-episodical, which means it's not episode three or anything like that. So what do we have? This is a movie that is about how the rebels get the Death Star plans essentially to Princess Leia. In fact, there are rumors that it, the movie will end about 10 minutes before the 1977 Star Wars A New Hope movie begins. A nice little tie together. All right. It sounds pretty good to me. Now, please, whatever you do, don't watch Rogue One and then watch A New Hope immediately after with someone who's never seen Star Wars. They're going to wonder why there's a severe drop off in budget and graphics. <laughs> Can you imagine watching a 2016 Star Wars movie with someone who's never seen Star Wars and then taking them back to 1977 right after? They're going to be like, oh, what? So, okay, all right. So Rogue One is going through reshoots. And this caused quite a stir on the interwebs. The social justice warriors, the keyboard warriors, the fanboys. Uh, fanboys. They came out and they just started to shred it. <gasps> Disney, ex I, th these are actual headlines uh, that I saw on Facebook from, let's, let's face it, they are, they're clickbait sites. They're clickbait sites. That's what they are. They're, they post these sensationalist headlines for you to click, and then they go to their advertisers and say, oh, my God, look at all the clicks we're getting. Give us money. You, you know, you've seen them on Facebook before. You've seen things like, uh, uh, okay, all right, this three-year-old uh, wanders into the street. You won't believe what happened next. you got to click on it to find out. You know, this mother of two was getting yelled at by a waiter. You won't believe what happened next. That's clickbait, okay? So a lot of clickbait sites came out, and what did they say? They said, oh, Disney executives are horrified at Rogue One and demand reshoots. N no, no, no. <gasps> Disney executives are demanding that Lucasfilm reshoot Rogue One. No, 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 no. Let me tell you what happens here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages. Movies go through reshoots. Every movie does. There is not one movie in the history of cinema with maybe the exception of those, uh, you know, first person movies like Blair Witch, you know, like those type of things that go through reshoots. They all do. Force Awakens went through reshoots. Nobody cared. Star Trek does it. Um, 
e- even even TV episodes. There are episodes of Doctor Who that went through reshoots, especially big ones like you know Name of the Doctor, Day of the Doctor. Those go all go, they all go through reshoots. But because there wasn't a lot of news going on and because nothing stirs up the fanboys more than, you know, Disney meddling with Star Wars or whatever, they, they post this nonsense and they say, OK, well, let's see, how can we stir up the fan base today? And sadly, people are, are buying into it. God, don't go to clickbait. If you want to go to a legit website, I guarantee www.mygeeksnews.com. It's my website. It's my news website. Oh, look, look, it's his website, so he can talk about it. Yeah, but it's legit. There's no clickbait there. You can talk Marvel, there's DC, there's Star Trek, there's Star Wars, there's video gaming news right there, and you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about malware either, because I run a clean site. Thank you very much. (laughs) I like to run a clean site. Uh, All right, so this is unfortunately a problem with what I call instant media. Instant media means exactly that you post something and it's right there it's immediate you react to it it's right there it's immediate you share it it's right there it's immediate it is instant media and unfortunately it kills good intentions like what disney has for star wars i mean bob Iger, who's the ceo of disney does not drink the tears of fanboys he did not buy star wars to burn it and disney executives i guarantee you they only do two things they give lucasfilm money and then they take in the box office receipts. That's pretty much it. Now, of course, I'm sure they do other things. And Kathleen Kennedy, being president of Lucasfilm, still has to run some things by Disney. Just say, hey, here's what we're doing. But 99% of the time, Disney's going to be look at Kathleen Kennedy and say, let's see. You did Jurassic Park. You did Schindler's List. You were there as Spielberg from the very, very beginning. You've been involved in just about every major blockbuster for the past, I don't know, 40 years. Yeah, Kathleen, you do what you want. Have fun. Just don't make a bomb. Don't don't pull a Fantastic Four, please. I know you're all rolling your eyes right now, but hey, it's true. It's true. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy does does do some pretty good work there. So don't freak out over reshoots. Don't believe the hype. Well, the bad hype, I guess, because <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of Rogue One hype between now and then. The movie looks pretty good. Uh, the casting looks pretty good. I mean, there was even a stir, and this is instant media to blame again. Instant media to blame because every everybody, and I'm using air quotes for everybody, freaked out about having a female lead in another Star Wars movie. You remember that? Nobody freaked out over Daisy Ridley, but everybody freaked out over this, uh, uh, God, I'm blanking on her name, but she plays Jin Erso. And everybody freaked out because, oh God, it's another woman. You know who freaked out? Nobody. Nobody. Maybe, okay, all right, maybe one or two morons in i don't know you know the backwoods of somewhere who think women you know deserve to be barefoot pregnant in the kitchen never leave never do anything never amount to anything that's what they believe okay i get that but really now come on it's 2016 there's not one real fan out there who's upset that there's a woman who's taking a lead role in star wars there there's there's not and if there is, if you're listening, there is really, come on now. You got to be kidding me. Um, so Felicity Jones, you know, made some waves when they announced that she was going to be the, the, the lead role. And that was pure clickbait. That's all that it was. It was people posting, oh my God, you won't believe what people are saying about Felicity Jones. And of course you click on it. Not a big deal. Never has been, never will be. It's the Disney sucks crowd. Really people, you know, the fanboys who live in their mom's basement, since 2012, and they can't get over the idea that Disney bought Star Wars four years ago. Four years ago. And one box office extravaganza later. I mean, that's... Oh, fanboys. Uh, love the movie. Hate the negativity from those fanboys. I mean, give me a break. Okay, all right. So we got a little bit of time left here. Um, this, this is my favorite. I, I love this. What we do is... We have the Sarlacc pit, and this is this is uh, I, I did this way back in the day. I will I will fully ad- admit that it's my favorite part of the show because we all know somebody we want to throw into the Sarlacc pit. We really do. <gasps> yes, you remember that? Remember uh, who was it? It was um, I'm trying to. Okay, you know what? I'm just th- pointing and clicking into working here. It's my first show. I want you to get on the the, the air here for a little bit. 
Uh, I'm dealing with my sound prognosticator here. Hey, See, you told me to be quiet. Yeah, I did tell you to be quiet, but uh, but this is a good example for the debut show okay. of what we're dealing with here. So, all right. The rules are for the Sarlacc pit, you got to throw somebody in. Okay. But you can't throw in politicians or celebrities because they all deserve it and we would spend the entire hour just chucking them in. That's true. Okay. I mean, that would, God. Define we, celebrity. Uh, okay. Does it have to be a current celebrity or a celebrity from the past? Can we throw them in? Well, if it's from the past, what do they do to you to make you want to throw them in? I mean, that's Star Wars prequels. Okay. All right. Let, yeah, mm, <clears throat> no, no, no. Let's make it personal to you. All right. Okay. For example, for me, for me. All right. Anybody who sits at a red light in yeah. the right hand lane and yeah. doesn't turn right, you know what I'm talking about? And it's the person. I'm not saying like somebody who's already been there when you pull up. I mean the person mm-hmm. who stops at yellow. They could have gone through, and instead they're blocking the entire right lane so yeah. nobody else can turn. I want to take that person, and I want to put them in. He's got <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So that's, that, oh, okay. that's the whole fun of that. So if you were to put somebody in, somebody who personally annoys you that you just, you just want to chuck into the Sarlacc pit, who would it be? Everybody who just slows traffic down on I-10 and 410 around 6.15 at night. Oh, God. And they do it for no reason. You know, they just drive slow just because, oh, okay, I'm just going to drive slow, I guess. Okay, okay. There's no accident. No. No cops? No. There's, just there's, slow there's, people there's no vehicle who are fire? preventing me from coming here to entertain the masses. Mm. I say put them in. All right, now you can find this on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash G-Y-G-O official. I put this up every week. Go there, throw someone in. I can't guarantee that I'll get to everybody simply because I may not have the time. <laughs> we got a little bit of time now, so I'm going to go through this. Um, and then I promise, I my Marvel news, I forgot my Marvel news, but I'm going to get to that also. Uh, Jordan Wignell, way over in the UK, says he wants to throw in local chavs. Those are like, you know, one like punks uh, who find pleasure in terrorizing local neighborhoods. Grow up and get a life. Well, for Jordan, for you, I say put them in. Uh, Alex Rosenheim on the Facebook page says, I want you to throw in blogs and other so- and other uh, sites who spread rumors without checking sources. You think people would just tell lies on the Internet? <gasps> yeah, it happens all the time and it's stupid. So for you, Alex, I say put them in. Uh, Sean says, will you be doing a podcast? Well, not really a Sarlacc pit thing, but yes, we are doing a podcast. You can find everything, the live streaming, you can find the podcast all at, uh, www.930amtheanswer.com for a show. I got the website, right? How about that? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Here we go. Uh, Brian Neely says, this is a good one. You're like this one. Goku. And all Dragon Ball Z characters, his spelled characters, the cast of Firefly and Doctor Who, Darkseid and Thanos, who came, whoever came up with the concept of the Dyson Sphere and the Star Killer base. The cast of Firefly are celebrities. Ooh. Hmm. We're gonna strike it. Well, maybe that the one who played Simon, because he hasn't had he hasn't done anything recently. But I Nathan Fillion, he... Gina Torres, Adam Baldwin, Alan Tark, and um, Summer Glau are all celebrities. Alan's going to be in Rogue One. He is. Yes, he is. He's going to be a leaf on the wind. He's also going to be on the show Powerless. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, Brian. We're going to have to strike it. Mm. Got to go. All right, uh, let's see. Apologies. Wait, maybe oh. everybody else that he listed. Yeah, put him in. Ah! First show, I'm feeling generous. Okay. Travis Dedman says, uh, my ex. Okay, put her in. <laughs> Charles Yego says, I'd throw in my mother-in-law, but I'm afraid she'll clog the Sarlacc's throat. Wow, dude. That's, um, mm. put her in. <laughs> All right. So I want to get to my, um, that's pretty much it that I, I have time for right now, but I do want to get to this Marvel news that I was talking about because I did promise I would get to it. Uh, the gentleman who played, oh God, come on, work for me. There we go. The gentleman who played uh, Daredevil, not no, not Ben Affleck, but in the TV series. He was coming up to audition for a movie. He knew it was a Star Wars movie because he recognized the people that, it, that he was working with there for the audition. But he didn't know which Star Wars movie. How freaky is that to go to an audition and you don't know what movie it's for? 
but he's pretty sure it was. It's called a paycheck. Ooh, yeah, good point. Probably for scale. <laughs> so he goes in, he thinks it was for the Han Solo movie. He thinks he was auditioning for a role or the role in, in the Han Solo standalone movie that comes out in 2018-ish. Uh, he didn't get the part. You know why he didn't get the part? He was so used to playing Matt Murdock, he didn't make eye contact with anybody. He played a blind guy who was doing this Han Solo, allegedly, uh, Han Solo role. So the casting director stops him halfway through and says, dude, are you ever going to look at me? Are you, are you, hello? Hey, I'm over here. Wait, hello. He's like, oh God, I'm just, I'm so used to being Matt Murdock. He was in character in an audition. <laughs> Can we put the casting director in the Starlight pit? I don't know. Do you think he would have made a good choice? I'm not saying he would have been a bad choice. I guess we'll never know. Can you put someone in for something you may never know? You know what? Let's have some fun. Put her in. <laughs> oh, goodness. So it's, um, well, we'll never know. We'll never know what could have happened uh, with a possible Marvel Star Wars crossover. Oh, that would have been weird. Uh, Disney owns both. It could still happen. Mm. Chris Evans in Star Wars? I'm okay with that. Uh, Ryan, Mark Ruffalo, Star Wars? Okay. Scarlett Johansson, Star Wars? Yes, please. Scarlett Johansson in the Slave Lady Bikini in Star Wars? Even more, yes, please. Daisy Ridley in Marvel? Okay. Okay, all right, good news. Okay, so the Gotta music- Gotta cast a movie Mockingbird for Pete's sake. The music's starting to play, so that means we're running out of time here. I uh, want to thank you all for listening to the debut of Get Your Geek On. We will be here every Saturday night. And we will be on the podcast, and we'll be on the website, and we'll be on the uh, the Facebook page as well. Check us out, facebook.com slash G-Y-G-O official. Check us out, www.mygeeksnews.com. Check us out, 9.30 a.m. The Answer here in San Antonio. Wherever you are, I hope you stay geeky, and I really hope you can get your geek on.